Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another Vector Made tutorial. It's been a while since my last video. Um, I was kind of working on some play posters for a local uh, community college and actually just redid one because they changed out one of the plays they were going to do. Uh, in that, I had quite a bit of texture inside of a ve vector format. And so I just kind of wanted to run through like a basic tutorial of how you would use some uh, textured graphics and incorporate them into a vector format and keep them in vector format. So let's jump in. Okay, so here I've just grabbed, uh, I, I went ahead and made an eight and a half by 11 uh, piece of paper, so to speak, uh, that a poster might be printed on. Went ahead and just gave it a red background, 100 magenta, 100 yellow, and then grabbed a couple of textures on uh, a Google image search and um, and then I have this, this is a logo I vectorized for um, a, signs, a sign company in uh, Frisco, um, Texas. So um, I just thought I'd use that because it's pretty simple and would probably work well for this application. So if you wanted to see kind of where I'm grabbing these textures, here it is. I just said grunge texture in a Google image search and you can get all kinds of stuff. I grabbed this one and I believe I grabbed that one as well. Or no, this one. So this one and this one. You know, pick whatever you want. All of these are going to um, have different qualities and, um, you know, that's just kind of up to you, personal preference on that stuff. And then it might be a little trial and error as well. So uh, one of the things I did with these uh, play posters I designed was I made the backgrounds all the same and I just used a texture to kind of go over those. So like something like this on top of something like this um, and how I would normally do that. What are you doing, Pop-Up? Go away! My goodness, Microsoft and your spam in the middle of a tutorial, no less, you bastards. All right, um, <laughs> where was I? So anyway, this uh, let's just resize this to about the same height. I kind of like, I don't want that much dark, but I kind of like a little bit of light and dark. And to vectorize this, I'll just come up here and let's do shades of gray because I don't want to... I don't want to have, um, I'm just doing a live trace, shades of gray. I don't want to have any real color in this piece because I'm applying it to the color in the background, the red background. So there it kind of looks, you know, like this, which is fine. I think for a generic texture, this is going to be fine. You could go in and tweak your settings in here in the image trace panel if you wanted to. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I, this is fine. Let's just go with that. Um, now, this is where I'm like going to probably try a few different things and just to see what works best. And I may add multiple layers here because I still want it to have largely a red color like this. Um, so let's see if we do multiply. I figured that would be too dark and it is, but it gets all of that kind of texture in there. Um, so let me see if I grab this red. I'm going to copy that real quick. Maybe move this around until it's somewhere I really like it. Probably about there. And I'm going to, I copy, uh, did control C to copy it. I'm going to go control F to paste to the front. All right. So now you've got red in front of everything else. And I might go over here to maybe a soft light. Maybe hard light. No, hard light's too much. What if we just do overlay? Let's try soft light again. Soft light I think is the winner. It's still too dark so what we'll do is maybe cut this in half to 50% and see what that does. Oh the other thing I'm gonna have to do is expand that real quick. So why it's retracing it is because I did not hit expand. So if we come up here you click expand and that will make your image trace final so to speak. Um, but that is what I wanted right there. This, this look see so that's too dark. You add another layer of red to the top, do like a soft light, drop this down to 50% opacity, and that looks pretty good. Now the only, only other thing I'd want to do is maybe uh, get rid of these edges just for my personal um, eye so I'm not bothered by them. You could just pull them in like that um, if you want. Or you could say you really like the space, which I, I do. I actually like that I'm not getting some of this boring spot here. So what I would actually do is copy and paste this front again just so I have a clipping mask then I select the background layer so both the front layer and this background here are selected I right click and I say make clipping mask and it's going to do that 
And then what it's going to do is bump that to the front. So I just need to send it back one. So all I'm doing is while I've got it selected, control left bracket. See, up one, back one, back another. And it really doesn't make any difference between those two. So we'll just leave it right there. But that looks pretty good, I think, for a background. Now, we'll go ahead and add some text. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna highlight everything here. So the whole thing is selected and then hit Control-2 and that locks that down so it's no longer selectable. You could also come into your Layers palette and create a whole new layer and just lock it by clicking on that if you wanted to. Um, but for this, since there's not a whole lot of layers, I'm fine with just manually locking it with Control-2. Um, so I'm gonna put the plaza somewhere in the middle here. I'm going to go ahead and align the artboard down here. This is a line horizontal. This is a line vertical. Just kind of want it in the center. I'm going to blow that up just a little bit, maybe there, just for the purposes of being able to see this. Now with this one, if I live trace it, I don't want to do the white. So I'll probably end up doing my own custom thing, but you always have to start off with one of these presets first for whatever reason. That's just the way it works. So we'll do silhouettes real quick and you'll see that's crappy. Um, I'm gonna come into the image trace panel here and kind of mess with some of the settings. All right, so we've got this. 230 is probably fine. We'll come back to that. Paths at 50%. I really want this to be higher. I like 90 to 95% on a lot of things. Not everything, but a lot of things. So 95%, let's see what that looks like. Um, it doesn't help much because of noise being at 90% or 90 uh, pixels. What that does is that cuts out anything that's 90 pixels large uh, or smaller. So that gets rid of a lot of tiny pieces, but I actually want the tiny pieces for the texture. So I just put in zero. It'll, it'll go down to one. That's the lowest value, but you know, zero, zero is easier for me to remember. So I always put in zero. And there you go, now we have all these little bits that are in there, these little juicy bits, which I'm happy with. You know, we could maybe bump this up to five and see how much clearer it is. It is a lot clearer. Uh, if you don't want all those tiny, tiny little nicks in there, and let's just go with that. I think that's fine. That still leaves a lot of the texture without too many tiny, tiny pieces that might look a little funky when you go to print this thing. All right, so we'll expand it. Go ahead and get that out there. Now, what I want to do with this one is, um, you know, I probably want to just keep it red. So let's change this color from 100% black. Go to CMYK on your options tab over here and bump it up to 100%, 100% on the magenta and yellow. Make it red. Bring it over here. Maybe make it the full height and then I'm gonna to have to bring it to the front control shift right bracket brings it all the way to the front like that now in this case it's a little bit too much it's covering up too much of my words here uh, plaza is just getting buried so you might come in and, and maybe do something different like multiply or um, maybe we do a soft light let's try soft light Soft light's kind of cool. The only problem is it's not going to show up on the white. So this may end up being a multiply and you drop it down to 25% or something like that. So you get a little bit of texture in the white. Um, and then the rest of it shows up in the background. And, you know, the other thing you could do is come in here and make this um, a little bit darker. Maybe we do a 25%. Maybe we do a 50% black add to it. So just create a little bit more interest in the picture. Um, again, I don't think this looks great. This is just showing you kind of how one might go about doing such a thing. I'll open up my, let's see, where did I put it? It's in here. Is it in this one? No, it's in last, it actually was in the last year. I added it to something that we ended up doing last year. So if I open up the most recent one was this. I'm going to kind of show you. This is what I ended up doing for the play poster, and I'm also going to do a postcard with it as well. And each one of them look like this. They just had a little bit different text treatment uh, graphics involved based on whatever the uh, play is, but they all kind of had the same format for the information uh, 
portions here um, that you see, and they might be placed in different places and whatnot. But this was the gist. So I, you know, this is made of a lot of different textures. You can see there's uh, sort of a splatter effect, and then this rough texture on the top of the the text here. So just to show you the layers, there's the top layer that is just color, and it's just going on top of everything. See, it's really boring if it's just this text. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it's, you know, just pretty plain that way. But if I add the texture back on, it just kind of looks a little rough now. It gives it a cool effect. And each one of the posters has this look to it. So it's a really nice uniform look. Um, the rest is, and I, it's probably locked. Yep, sure enough. This texture right here um, was what I used. And let's see. Yeah, that's what I used on top of the just kind of dark red background, the sort of blood red that we have background here. And I just did a multiply of 7% with, with this texture. So let's look at it at 100%. It looked like that. And I dropped it down to 7. So that's what I did for that. Um, you know, that was the basic tutorial for this thing right here. Um, Leave a comment down below, like, subscribe. I'm really, really close to 300 um, subscribers, which is okay. You know, I need a thousand again. Um, I don't know how long it's gonna take to get there, but you know, we're, we're working on it when we have free time to do so. So anyway, uh, let me know if there's any you guys have any questions. I love answering those. I will get to every single question I get in the comments. And um, if you have any ideas for a video or something that you'd suggest or have any difficulty with and you'd like to know how better to do it, let me know. The Vector Mate is here for you. All right. Peace out.